Please give a warm welcome to Sang Li. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my presentation. My name is Zhang Li. I am a software engineer in Google and TKE and Atlas. Thanks to Thomas Graf who invited me to give a talk here. Today, I'm going to talk about how to achieve Kubernetes network policy logging with eBPF. I will start by describing what's Kubernetes network policy and what are the challenges we are facing on logging network policy actions. Kubernetes network policy is used to specify which paths are allowed to talk to one another. Network policy is defined based on the path labels. Here is an example of network policy. It first selects the target path this network policy should apply to. In this case, it's database path. It then specifies who is allowed to talk to the target path. In this case, only front end path is allowed to talk to database on the TCP port 80. All other ingress connections to the database path will be denied. This is illustrated in the diagram on the left. The green path is allowed to talk to the blue prompt on port TCP 80. If the red path tries to connect to database path, it will be rejected because no policy allows this connection. Note that if a path is not selected by any network policy, it's open. A path can be enforced in one direction or both. Multiple policies can select the same path and the policies are union together in a whitelist model. These properties need to be considered when design network policy logging, as we will show later. Network policy is a Kubernetes v1 API, but it doesn't have a unified implementation. Instead, it's implemented by various CNI providers, including Calico, Selenium, Wavenight, etc. The implementation can be based on different data plans, such as Apptable, eBPF, OVS, and so on. The common approach to implement network policy is to pass the user configured label based network policy and convert them to programmable and matchable rules in data plan per part. The resulting policy rules could look quite different from what user configured due to optimization and processing. Being able to enforce network policy is not enough. Many security conscious customers not only want to enforce the network policy, but also want to know what is enforced which connections were denied and when, which connections were allowed by which policy, etc. This information is useful for them to monitor abnormal situations, to debug the traffic, and to satisfy the auditing requirements. The visibility requirement has been a top ask for many of our customers. It's also a challenging task because we not only want to log the connections, but also want to log them efficiently. Some paths are not enforced, so we shouldn't log them. So we need to be able to control logging in the data plan on the fly. Also, we need to provide the relevant path information because path IDs come and go. Multiple network policies can all match the same connection. We should list all of them when queried so that the user can use this information for further analysis. We want to do all this with minimal impact to the data path performance. Once we identify the goal and the requirement, we need to decide on top of which data plan we should implement this feature. Clearly, the old way of IP tables cannot satisfy our needs. The functionality there are hard to extend. The logging approach it provides is clumsy. The policy matching mechanism it uses is known to be inefficient on large scales. So we started to look for alternative data path options. A data plan that can not only work for this feature, but also be able to support many more powerful new features on observability, security, and connectivity that GKE plans to offer. 
After investigating various data plan options, we decided to implement this feature based on eBPF. Of course, you already know this since I'm now talking on eBPF summit. The biggest advantage of eBPF is its flexibility and programmability. We can easily insert the bytecode to learn this kernel without the need of reloading the submodule. And we can modify the data used by the eBPF program on the fly. With the kernel perf event buffer, we can easily pass a message from the kernel space to user space as well. The ability to enrich the kernel with user space information without jumping back and forth between the two spaces enable context-aware operations on network packets at high speeds. The programmability of eBPF also allows us to easily extend the functionalities for our future offerings. As a result of the investigation, GK decided to adopt the eBPF technology with Cilium, which is the biggest open source project on applying eBPF technology to Kubernetes. Thanks to the large number of talented and diligent contributors to Cilium project, Cilium already provides Kubernetes network policy support, along with other functionalities. And it also has a very nice framework uh, attaching eBPF programs to various hook points in Kubernetes networking stack. Therefore, we can easily implement the policy logging feature on top of Cilium. Now, how do we achieve policy logging with eBPF and Cilium? Let's look at the traffic path. Packet will come into the Kubernetes work node through ETH0. It's then forwarded to each part by kernel through routing. To apply network policy enforcement, the policy enforcement functions are inserted to the TC hook on the interfaces that connect to each part. The function will make policy verdict decisions based on a couple of eBPF maps and the packet, in particular, contract map, identity map, and the policy map. The contract map helps to track the state of the connection. The identity map helps to extract the policy key from the packet header. And the policy map contains all allowed identity and port combinations and is converted from the user's network policy configurations. All maps can be updated on the fly. If a matching entry is found from the policy map, the packet is allowed and is delivered to the pad. If no matching entry can be found, the verdict is denied and the packet will be dropped. This diagram illustrates only ingress policy enforcement, but you can imagine that the egress would work in a similar way. To enable policy logging, we need to add a notification event when the policy verdict is made, and then pass it to user space. How? We can use the perf ring buffer. Perf event buffer is a high performance, lockless, per CPU memory mapped RIM buffer, where the eBPF program can push customer data and the full or truncated packet contents to a user space application. Because this buffer is per CPU lockless and in memory, writing customer data to the perf buffer will be very efficient. A BPF helper function, BPF SKB event output is available for writing data to the buffer. So from the policy enforcer function, we can simply call the function which will, with the data we would like to push to the ring buffer. Once the data is passed to the perf ring buffer, CNN monitor would be notified to read the data from the buffer. Then the monitor reader will subscribe to the events and get them for further processing. Note that the monitor and the post-processing are all in user space where we have more power to do more complicated operations. Also, the monitoring process and the data plan process are asynchronous. Once the data plan puts the data into this perf ring buffer, it would return and get ready for the next packet. This way, we make sure that the data path is not impacted by processing in the user space. 
what data can we pass to the profiling buffer? It's actually very flexible and totally decided by us. We can include anything that's helpful, such as event type, source, verdict, direction, etc. The data we used for the policy verdict event is shown on the right, where the notify capture header is a common header that contains the event type, source ID, etc. And the additional fields are customized to our needs. This data will be passed in binary format to the user space. So we need to make sure that the structure used at the receiver side is aligned to what's being defined here. Another optimization we did to this feature is to output events only when necessary. We generate the policy verdict event only if the packet is for a new connection. Some paths are not in first or in first only in a certain direction. For the packets, that are not uh, enforced, they will still pass through the policy enforcement function, but all packets will be allowed. We don't want to generate policy verdict events for them. An advantage of using EPPF is that we can easily insert a check to only write events to the profiling under certain conditions. The information of whether the endpoint is enforced and in which direction can be stored by a flag which is um, in the static data that the BPF program has access to in its execution. Although it's not an EBPF map, it can still be updated on the fly by using ELF substitution. By making this flag to be volatile, the program will fetch the most updated value of the flag on every execution and compare it against the packet to figure out whether to log the verdict event. We can see the generated verdict event with the set and mantle function. Here is an example output where we run a mantle with a type policy verdict. The lock will show from which endpoint this event is generated, the remote identity, the traffic information, direction, and verdict action, etc. If a packet passes through multiple enforcement points, such as one at egress and one at ingress, we may see multiple events corresponding to the same packet. Although the event is generated, it doesn't contain all the information we needed to present to the user. One information we need is which policy allowed the connection. The other one is annotation corresponding to the part IPs. Because the event passed to user space, we can easily retrieve this information from the in-memory cache in the control plane. Remember the processing is done in user space and is asynchronous, so it doesn't impact the efficiency on the data path. We implemented this logging idea in, in GKE and exported the policy verdict events to GKE cloud logging in JSON format. Here is an example log output seen in cloud logging. It shows that the part client allow in default namespace talk to the Kubernetes part in Kub system namespace. The connection is allowed by an allow all network policy, which was programmed so that we can see all connections from this part. There are also a couple of other fields that are not expanded here due to space limit, such as connection field, which will show the original traffic tuples, and also timestamp to show when this connection was happened. The exact way of using this feature is provided on this link uh, to the user guide. Kubernetes policy logging is the first feature we developed on top of eBPF, but we already see its great potential. eBPF's ability to augment network packets with custom, with custom metadata enables a long list of possible use cases. It can help us to enhance the observability, security, and many other Kubernetes-aware packet manipulations without sacrificing performance. We are very excited about embracing this new technology and contributing to CDM community as well. 
Here are the related blog posts if you are interested in reading more. This is the end of my talk. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Sang. Thank Great you. presentation. Please give a round of applause in the Slack channel. And we have, we have a first question. Um, what, my question is, what is the difference between using Cilio network policy and network policy? Okay, sure. <laughs> so network policy um, is a, a um, API that's defined by OSS uh, Kubernetes community that's agreed there and it's a standard API there. Um, but um, uh, Kubernetes didn't have a standard implementation there. Right. So um, when various CNI provider tries to implement this, some of them feel like, oh, we want some extended functionalities. I mean, at least that's my understanding. Um, so that they, they define their own format so that it's just easier for um, quicker for them to extend. Because otherwise, if you modify Kubernetes um, it policy, it takes a longer cycle. Right. So that's my understanding. So that different um, providers start to do their own level policy, um, so that they have they can have um, more uh, semantics. Like for example, like Cilium did some yep. much more, right? Um, and so I think the purpose is similar. It's just that to maybe better satisfy users' need. Also, right now in OSS, we also have a work group to try to improve the current um, Kubernetes network policy to try to unify the behavior uh, so that we can um, better uh, serve the community. So Thomas, if you want to add something, please feel free. Well, I think that's uh, it's a perfect answer. Selim <laughs> network policy is simply like the, the Selim specific extensions that are not in the upstream Kubernetes network policy format. The next question is, do you also lock traffic that was dropped or denied? And if yes, how often do you lock these events for every packet? Do you have some kind of rate limiting? Do you have some kind of aggregation? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, yes. Um, so if, if a packet gets dropped, right, because the connection is never established, right, so that means um, you cannot really do it per connection because every packet keeps coming, right? And so then the question is, are you going to, to log off there? Are you going to do some aggregation there, right? Yes. Um, that, that's actually a very good question right now. So you can, um, you can, uh, depends on which level you want to put. Like for our case, we simplify it. We will say, okay, you put to the per of events and we are going to aggregate at the upper layer, the user space, right? But ideally, theoretically, you can also say, okay, I'm trying to aggregate um, um, in the database, in the data plan, that's definitely more efficient if that's one, mm -hmm. but that just needs a lot of, some more work. For example, some common approaches, you, even you drop, you still have a contract entry so that for a short time, which is where well, that's some, just some possible approach for you to um, to try to aggregate the drops in different level. Yes, that's that's definitely uh, something we could uh, improve in terms of performance. Okay. Do you already have plans to develop Kubernetes network policy logging further, or do you have a roadmap of some kind? There is an open source and. Um, um, work group on network policy right now, trying to improve the semantics uh, uh, or provide more functionalities for uh, OSS uh, Kubernetes network policy. Once that the API is defined, right, we definitely want to um, extend it further and, and support them. And GTE also have some work to uh, get more functionality there. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Sang, for your nice keynote. And again, give a round of applause to Sang Lee in the Slack channel. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay in the Slack channel. There's a couple of more questions that we didn't have time to get to. Yeah, I can answer that. Yeah, thanks. All right, thanks again.